Hello, my friends. We are at the Great Florida Yard Sale. I haven't decided if I'm gonna pass this on to you or keep it for myself, but we have got our cart. We've got Dalton. Dalton, say hi. All right, we're gonna go see what we can find. All right, so this is our second year going to the Florida Great Yard Sale. This is in Crystal River, Florida. It is set up in the mall parking lot. And yeah, let's look and see what we can find. Saw this Coors Light 10 sign and it was only $10. I tried to look it up with Google Lens. Unfortunately, even though I had signal while I was there at the sale, I couldn't get it to comp anything, which made for a little bit of a difficult day. I was showing Brad that dinosaur there right in the middle. We sold one of those for almost $100 before. That one was all faded and looked like it had been left out in the sun though. Now on this table, everything is a dollar. You have to be really careful when stuff is a dollar to not overbuy stuff that either will not sell or is not valuable. I saw these really pretty glass coasters. Unfortunately, those were priced at $5 each. So I did decide to leave those. This sale last year, and it's looking like this year again, is a lot of antique dealers, which means retail prices. Now, I bought from this guy last year. This is an amazing leather wrap ceramic fish dish. Fish dish. It was made in Italy. Absolutely gorgeous. So I called him over to ask about that. And I also wanted to ask him about this Wedgwood Jasper wear. He, as you see, had a ton of pieces. So he told me that he was going to count them for me because I was just wondering if he knew how many there were so I could figure out how much I would be into each piece. So it turns out there were 38 pieces here. And he asked for 75. His was actually the first place I had bought anything at. So I told him I was going to think about it. And I did buy that fish ceramic leather wrap dish for $5. I don't know what Dalton was telling me there. But I absolutely love this leather dish. And there's mom coming over to look as well. So I told him I would think about the Wedgwood. We are going to walk through the rest of the sale and... Let's see what we see. I don't want to spend $75 right off the bat if there are other deals to be found. I did not bring a ton of cash. I brought a decent amount, but I didn't want to spend $75 really fast. So before I left his booth, though, I wanted to check out other stuff. He had these hand-painted plants there, Yamasha, I believe. And I looked those up. They actually only sell for about $5 each. I didn't even ask him how much those were. All of those vintage keychains or something where if I were at a yard sale or something, that's something I would ask about buying all because they'll sell for $8 to $15 a piece. And you can get them really cheap for $0.25, cents, $0.50, cents, then those little profits add up. So keep your eye out for vintage magnets and keychains for sure. They're really easy to list and ship, and I really like doing them. Now, I saw the Harley Davidson book. Again, I could not comp anything, so I was having to go purely off of what I know. This was a really nice Johnson Brothers bowl, but they typically don't sell for a ton. I was pointing out the fishing pole to see if Brad might possibly want that. And you know, I got to go check out the towels and the linens just to see if I see anything interesting. But... I did not see anything that caught my eye. I do end up buying something else from him. You will see it here in a second. Now, this was a generic video camera. Those I don't believe sell as well. And then I saw this Minnie Mouse and she does say Disney Japan. And there's also a Mickey. So I asked him how much for these small figurines. And he came over, asked me to see them. I thought when he saw Disney Japan, he was going to tell me more. But he actually told me he only wanted a dollar each for those. So I am going to get those. And it looks like the two of them should sell together for about $25. 
maybe a little bit more. And then I didn't have anything but a 20 and he didn't have change. So I'm bumming money off of my mom because she had change. So tip number one of the day, do not go to garage sales without small bills. I should have, I, I did not get the cash. So you'll have to talk to Brad about that. Dalton wanted to pay and he paid our $2. So now we are going to be on our way. Now, this lady told me that all of this stuff was absolutely free. And you know, free is just like the dollar table, but better. But again, you have to be very, very careful when you see free stuff. That is how you end up with massive death piles, cluttering up your space that you really don't want to list in the end. So I was looking through the bag of clothes, which actually kind of smelled pretty awful. I'm not going to lie. And I do dig because you can find really valuable stuff in the free bins. So I saw this DVD and there was a PS3 game and then I go to open it and of course it was empty. So I behaved and I did not take one thing out of the free bin. Brad about fell over when he came back and saw that I had taken nothing. Now these are you, why you, you clogs. I am going to look them up. And they look like they do okay, about 15 to 20, but those were in pretty rough shape. So I did decide to leave them. And then I saw all these throws. I was asking them how much they were. He told me $5, which is pretty standard for thrift prices. So I was okay with $5 a throw. Now this one was like a Southwestern Mexican throw, but it was not branded. That is what I was looking for there. I did not see any brands on it though. And then I saw this beautiful, beautiful butterfly throw and butterflies sell. And this one was an absolutely excellent condition. So I asked him if he could break a 20 and he could not. So I left it there for a minute and continued to look through. I was hoping maybe I could find enough where I didn't need that much change and I would be able to get it. So lesson definitely learned about not bringing smaller bills. Now the one in the bag he wanted 10 for, but I didn't see a brand on that one either. So again, had to go to mom to get money, <laughs> got the five bucks and got those. I did not ask prices on these Christmas trees because the small one was 10. Most of this stuff was expensive. But if you do not know, those ceramic Christmas trees sell for big money. And one thing that was driving me absolutely crazy this day is that nothing was priced. So if I want to buy a lot, which is what I typically do, I have to ask how much on everything, which is really annoying to me. So if you have a garage sale or flea market booth or do something like this it's it is an outdoor yard sale but it's almost like a festival please please price your items i bet you money you will sell more because i almost feel like if stuff isn't priced they're gonna like size me up to see how much i will pay now i did really really like this hand-painted wood it's like a wall plaque and so I did pick that up. It's really, really pretty. I was showing to Brad, it was kind of engraved there. And I'm going to see what else I can find. I think they had like $3 on this. I honestly do not remember. That is the problem here with nothing being priced. So we're going to look and see if we can see anything else. There was tons of like costume jewelry there. I did not feel like digging through. And that little jewelry box was made in China. So we're just going to keep on looking here to see if we can see anything else. I did get some stuff from that first vendor that I had the Wedgwood as well as this vendor last year. And they were both in the same spot, which is good to know. So I will definitely go back to them in the future because I bought from them last year as well as this year. And the prices, like I said, I feel like they're coming out of thin air. They might be something one time and then they're going to be different the next. So it was really, really frustrating. Now, I also saw this wooden wall plaque. It was signed and it's dated 1976. 
that is really, really cool, almost folk art looking. So I did pick that up as well. And I did get both of those actually. Now, what she ended up doing is I'm going to find something else. And she ended up doing everything for $10. Now, this was a Mexican Tanala little mini picture, but it did have a chip. I love the redware bowl, but I'm kind of scared on her bigger stuff, what she's going to charge me. Now, this plate was absolutely gorgeous and had a sailboat on it. I didn't, not the, not the black one, but the one that's actually in my hand. I don't think I even showed it really. Now I saw this really, really pretty like paperweight, but the bottom didn't look like it was signed. So I did leave that. And I do remember from last year, her Fenton and a lot of her glass was priced really high. Now this vase has a gorgeous polished bottom and like a red and blue swirl. So I wanted to see how much she would do with that as well. And the hard thing with these two is you don't know how much stuff is. There's typically a lot of people, they're lying. So you might wait for a while to find out it's priced higher than what you actually want to pay. So again, a little bit frustrating throughout the whole sale. Now I was showing her this vase. She ended up telling me if I would pay $10 for the vase, she would give me the other three pieces, the pelican, the wood plate, and the folk art for free. So I ended up paying $10 for all three of those. Now, this little basket, I thought it was a basket, but after doing some research with Google Lens, this is actually a 1960s vintage purse. And you will see, I am going to get it. It's really cute. It has Tampa Bay written on it. These sell for about $25 to $35. And I paid five for that. So that was a great pickup. I love these Nippon trays, but I have enough breakables in my death pile. I'm not trying to add. And as I said at the beginning, I didn't know if I was going to keep everything. I did decide to actually keep everything. Now, all of their plates were a dollar and then the serving pieces were five dollars. Now, this 10, I actually researched it is from the 1920s and 1930s. And she only charged me two dollars for that 10, which is an absolutely amazing price. Now, this vase, once I picked it up, didn't seem like it was as well made as I was hoping. And this little light like, covered compote was about the same. So he was telling me the serving platters are more, but all the plates are a dollar. I saw this gorgeous Nippon. I don't know if this is a vase because it has a cover. You guys tell me what this is, but it's absolutely stunning. And I believe I paid $5 for that as well, which is an amazing, amazing price. So all together here, I was $12 in and these comp out and actually this booth, they said they actually do live Instagram sales, which is kind of cool. And I did get their cards. I am going to have to check them out in the future. And if you see anything that I grabbed and should have bought, definitely let me know. I did end up coming back looking at the plates a little bit more. This is a dogwood pattern, but it had a little bit of scuffs on it. However, I saw this really pretty windmill plate and this was ironstone ware, Japan. And I did pick that up for only a dollar and I think I'll get about five. And now here is another dollar table. Dalton is running all over the place. My mom and Brad rode with me and then Brad's mom and his aunt and some more of his extended family were also there. So we had quite a few people there that day. Now I did see these cute little figurines, but they were not marked. And that little huggy bear, I think I, I picked it up. I don't know if I'm going to show you it or not. That little huggy bear is only half right there in the bottom, the yellow and orange one. Now this is a Libby glass trinket and I couldn't find that. Now, this is a beautiful piece. They had it marked at 12 and I couldn't find anything exactly like it, but I did find an arrowhead shape like this with a wolf and it actually only sold for $15. So as much as I love this, 
I did decide to put it back. You've got to be really, really careful with stuff you think will sell high because that is not always the case. Now here, they had everything priced honestly close to what retail was. And I spied a couple of paperweights over here on this table at the next booth. And we are going to go and check them out. Now, unfortunately, one of them had a chip and then the other one had a crack. So I did not even ask how much they were because they both had defects. And I am not trying to pick up items with defects right now that was a really really pretty vase most of this stuff was priced high so i did decide to stay now that is little owl thrifter guys and there is dalton and brad racing ah now over here i saw these disney plates i was expecting them to say they were like five bucks or so she wanted twenty dollars now the maleficent plate is actually probably worth about 40 or 50 but i don't want to spend 20 to make 40 or 50 so that was just a little too high. Now, this is a really pretty Murano bowl, but this it, it was scratched and kind of tarnished. I'm I'm on the fence of whether I should have got it or not. It was $25. I saw one similar comping out for several hundred, but I put it back. Now I had to show you these. I did not get any because again, they were not priced. This one was broke, but they were not priced and the vendor was talking to someone else and I didn't want to wait. So I probably could have gotten some of these owls, but I decided not to because I didn't want to wait. And again, I don't know how much they are charging for them. There were some really cute ones. I think the seashell owls are absolutely adorable. This glass owl was it really, really nice. It was from like a tourist shop though. So it probably wasn't worth a ton and the little owls were also from tourist shops now this bowl is absolutely amazing i do not know who signed it it is signed i'm gonna have to try and figure that out but i set it back down because i thought it would be too expensive and i end up coming back to get it and I will let you guys know for how much. Now I'm looking to see if this is a cross pin. I just sold a cross pin this week for $100, but it was not. And then I saw this gorgeous, gorgeous bowl. I am pretty sure this is a Murano piece. It has a beautiful polished bottom and it is just absolutely stunning. Again, I was thinking they were going to ask for way more than I would want to pay, but when I asked how much, they told me $5. And then they only wanted three for the other one. So I got both of those and then I continued looking. And this booth was here in the same spot again last year. And I did remember them being a little higher price. So I was really, really happy with the prices I got on those two bowls. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research to see what they'll sell for. This leather it's almost like a laptop case. Um, they wanted, I believe 20 or 25. I could not find the maker and they wanted, I think five for the pack of cards, the vintage Valentine's. So at 25 without being able to find comps and the vendor was actually telling me he tried to find comps and he was unable to find comps either. So I did decide to leave that bag behind. Now, I'm looking at some of their jewelry and I actually missed something that I will come back to here in a minute and I'm really surprised I missed it. They have some amazing stuff. Now this beaded purse and I don't know who it was by but they wanted $125 for that and I'm not sure like the style because it's like a purse but it's a larger purse. So I was looking in the case and this is a Zuni piece and it is absolutely stunning. So he got it out for me. I am not scared to pay up as you guys know if something has the value. Now this set was $250 and it was signed on the back. It was coral and turquoise as well as sterling silver and it had the belt buckle as well as the bolo tie. Now I was looking on the back to try and see if I could read the signature it did say zuni on the back and it was actually a couple 
that was on there and you're going to see here I am going to comp it I do not hide that I'm comping things especially something that costs $250 but I found one of the bolo ties and it only sold for $150 now these two little ashtrays I think were $2 a piece they're really cute vintage destination ashtrays in the shape of the state so I did pick those up as well now here is another high dollar piece this is a sterling silver with tiger shark teeth and i absolutely love that i believe he wanted 150 for that and in the back there was a dooney and burke purse but there were some imperfections on that so i didn't even ask now these vases are absolutely amazing they are brass they're similar to cloisonne he told me the name it starts with a c but it's not cloisonne because the whole piece isn't done in the colored enamel and he was telling me he wanted 20 for the smaller one or 75 for the pair of larger and i was not familiar with this style so if anybody's familiar with these and knows what they sell for or an approximate value of these please let me know i did try to use google lens and unfortunately i was not able to find anything so again when i'm paying up i really would like to know what i'm paying up for and i would like to know the value because it's scary to put out a lot of money without knowing what something is worth now i miss these kachina dolls the first one is not signed he was telling me they were both early i believe he wanted 75 for this one that was not signed which is probably what i feel i could get for it and then this other one i believe he wanted 100 for which again is probably about what I think I could get for it. I did look up that artist and was unable to find any information on them. So I'm used to paying like 10 to 20 for the Kachinas. I will pay up if I need to, but without being able to find the maker, I decided to leave those. So I got my two bowls. I got two ashtrays. I come back and Brad and mom had filled up the cart with plants now dalton got him two cars so he had to go pay the man for his cars and he told him he did not want a bag my chickens are outside the shed that is what you just heard i'm assuming you heard it i wanted to show you guys these amazing bird baths they were handmade out of like old dishes and they were only 35 dollars. i didn't get any because i feel like they would get knocked over and broke at my house but that fact that they only wanted $35 a piece was absolutely amazing all right definitely saw the Harley jacket this one was a windbreaker they wanted 25 for that one and then the leather one they wanted 154 I did again try to look up comps but was unsuccessful so again I am not going to pay 25 that jacket might only be worth 40 you know I could not find it so I left it there. Now I missed that that vintage Coleman cooler there. I did not see it. I'm sure they wanted a pretty penny. But I did see this wooden gazelle. Now I just sold one of these last week for $15 that was standing up. They only wanted $3 for this one. So I did pick that one up. They had some really nice pieces here. And they actually had some pretty good prices. So I was very happy with that. Dalton got a flag from someone. Now I am, again, same as the thrift store guys, picking up, turning over. I like this booth because stuff is priced. So I don't have to bother them. I can look. I can know if I want to get it because the prices are already there. Little Turtle was really cute for five, probably would sell for about 15, was not actually branded. This was a really cool honey jar made in Cedar Key, which is actually some islands that are pretty close to my house. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, this piece here with the candle holder was really, really pretty. And they wanted, I think, five for it, which was just a little bit too much. But I saw this really pretty pottery vase. It's just a little bud vase. It was only $2. I think I could get about $15, maybe $20 on that. It's really cool, mid-century, modern kind of swirl colors there. So I did end up picking up these two from that vendor. I tried to see if Dalton wanted to pay, but he was being grumpy at this point and he did not want to pay. Now, there is a fairy lamp. It is clear. I'm not super familiar with fairy lamps, so I did decide to leave that one there. And then the five finger vase from Portugal 
those can sell, but not for a ton. So I sat it down and I'm getting my money out. Look here. No, absolutely not. He will not pay for me. So I had to go pay for my own stuff, which is fine by me. Normally Dalton likes to help and pay. So we picked those two up for $5 and they should sell for a total of about 40 bucks. Now that set of chairs for, there were four of them. They only wanted 40, but unfortunately I don't have room in the shed or in the truck that day. Now this was a really nice needlepoint footstool. Those can sell really high. Then this Tiffany heart I saw, he wanted 40 for that. And the cloisonne eggs, he wanted 20. So his prices were higher. Stuff was not marked. This is another vendor that was really busy. And I had to stand there for quite a while before I actually got prices on anything. So I ended up not asking about other stuff because I just didn't have the time to keep waiting, unfortunately. And again, there were some jewelry pieces I really liked, but nothing was priced. And that was just, like I said, just a little frustrating because I can't ask him because he was helping other people. And that way, I don't know if I want to buy it or not. This guy has some amazing, amazing stuff though. And I love this little car here with the surfboards. It was super cute. And then this was a brass base on a vase. And he also had this. I love this fish plate. Love this. It's like a folk art redware fish plate. But he was busy talking. So I decided I would go ahead and go. And I like this Malifiori fish as well. But that one I think might actually be party light. I don't think that is like a Murano. So we are standing here hanging out. You can see we have filled the cart. Most of that is mom stuff. And I told Brad, I'm going to go back and I am going to go see if I can get that Wedgwood for less than $75. I wanted to get it for about $60. There were 37 pieces, so I would be just under $2 a piece into those. And I decided I would count, see what I had. And my tactic was that I was going to just pull out $60. Now, on the way, I saw this dollar bin and I was like, oh, I missed that last time. I honestly probably should have made a second pass through all of the booths because I'm sure I missed tons and tons of stuff. Most of this was very, very stained, unfortunately. So I did decide to leave those there and pass them up. Now, we are back at the Wedgwood. So I got only $60 out into my hand and asked him if he would take 60. And he asked if I would if, if I had 65. And so I had to dig, I did find the $5. I tried to get him to throw one of these apples in for free. The second one, this one on my left was absolutely amazing. And he said, no, he would not throw in the Wedgwood or the apples in with the Wedgwood for free. So I did pay $65 for 37 pieces. And as I'm loading this up, I will let you guys know, I believe they should sell for at least a $10 a piece, which is $370, up to $20 a piece, which is over $600. So I think this will be an absolutely amazing profit on this Wedgwood. And I have multiples of some, which those will be really easy listings to do with multi-quantity. So I'm very, very happy with the deal that I got. So overall, I did not find a ton of stuff this day because most of the prices were too high or I didn't know the prices and I actually couldn't even get the vendor's attention to get a price. So I am going to keep all of this. I will probably have my niece list this Wedgwood tomorrow on my eBay store. And 
the few other things that I got as well. I do appreciate you guys watching. I am going to do a what sold video with you guys tomorrow. And I also want to tell you guys tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, myself and my YouTube BFF, Dale Flippin' Fiasco, will be live on Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunters. So come see us and hang out. Bye, guys.